think that I believe Morocco needs to incorporate because if we don't then honestly we're never going to be able to progress further in the future and we'll always be stagnant. Welcome back to my channel I hope you're all having a fantastic day. So today I want to talk about three things that I feel the Moroccan national team should focus on in order to better prepare for next year's AFCON. These are some things that I've noticed could definitely help us improve but before we go ahead and begin this video as always don't forget to like and subscribe as it does help promote my channel to an audience looking to learn more about Moroccan football but with that being said let's go ahead and begin before i start this video i am 100 percent aware that not everything i'm going to say you will 100 percent agree with which is why i encourage you to leave a comment down below stating what are your thoughts and opinions that would help this national team grow over the next several years but with that being said let's go ahead and start off with my first step and that is to incorporate new players now with this AFCON we did see some of our under 23 national team players make the jump and get called up into this recent AFCON and that's all great but when we played throughout the entire tournament you primarily saw a team that was basically the same team that we saw during the 2022 World Cup and yes during that time they were great they were excellent but it feels like this current year and now they're just not to that same level that we once remember them hence why i feel that we should use the upcoming friendlies that we have scheduled in march to bring in new players test out you know new players that could possibly fit into our system I know prior to you know the AFCON list being revealed, we were getting fans who were shouting the likes of Elias Akomak, Neo El Ainawi, who were right now, you know, being stars for their current clubs. And I can definitely see why a lot of them were wanting them to be in the national team. But of course it was Wally Regrow's final decision but with these friendlies it will be the opportunity to create almost a new slate bring in those new players and bring in some from even like all the way down to the under 17. all of last year we saw all of our youth squad under 17 under 20 and even under 23 performing and you know seeing a lot of top talent that we could incorporate into the senior national team you know just to name a few we saw UC a Real Madrid youth academy Adam Asnu who currently plays for Bayern Munich and primarily with their youth teams now these players are just a few and I know that I have more on my list but I'm not saying that oh we need to they're gonna automatically be starting 11 every time the national team plays no that is not what i'm trying to imply but bring all these young players especially from the under 23 team that won the afcon will be able to start creating chemistry because these players will bring in a lot more energy definitely a lot of fluidity especially with that under 23 national team they already have the chemistry if you just bring that same team over into the senior national team i can guarantee you that they already will know like each other well to know what to do when their following man is going to make that overlapping run when to make that precise play so why not give these new players a chance yes we might not you know when those matches we might even law lose draw or even possibly win but the result isn't what matter it's how you see how these players are performing with their senior national team that get starts give you an idea of okay you know what these players i definitely see them as a future candidate for being with the senior national team or i even see them you know regularly calling up and it will start to bring in new young players who will bring that energy that we need and with that being said we need to talk about our next one and that is my number two on the list and that is basically our tactics all right in the world cup we were using a 4-1-4-1 system and at times after the world cup we were dabbling with a 4-3-3 formation but it looks like 
Regrawi didn't fully commit to it because once AFCON started, we kind of started going to back a 4-1-4-1 formation. But as mentioned, with these upcoming friendlies, it would be the best time to try out new tactics. If he still wanted to be like defensive minded but have good momentum in the counter attack I'd say let's try a 4-2-3-1 you know you can have four defenders two center defensive mid in the likes of Sophie and Eremba and Usama El Azuzi three uh, players uh, in the middle that would be able to create space and even occupy some of the left and right flank and of course the striker because throughout this tournament we just seem very disjointed and honestly left ourselves to some very awkward situation especially with that 4-1-4-1 formation that although it worked perfectly in the world cup it hasn't translated well into when playing in african competition we saw the amount of times that you know the opponents would easily break into our defense because Sophie and Amrabat was being left to guard a good majority of players that it just became a bit of an overwhelming problem and would lead to a lot of fouls now and the same for Yusuf and Nasiri with the 4141 yes we had a lot of midfielders piling to attack but we were just not seeing that final end product and that is hopefully something that we can also address in our tactics is our finishing being smarter with our defense and definitely you know knowing when to attack knowing when to defend being better at penalties as well as being more fluid as a team and that last part that i mentioned is what's going to lead essentially to our final discussion of this video and that is change the mentality of the team now what do i mean by that well when we were at the world cup and i know i'm kind of like saying everything with the world cup in mind and there is a good note to it see when we were in the world cup we were playing fluid football as mentioned we were like making great passes and everything it looked superb to and fun to watch but when you watch this team at AFCON we always looked very disjointed like we didn't know what the next man was going to do like we there wasn't enough communication amongst the players to be like okay I'm gonna make an overlapping run I want you to pass it to me there you know it shouldn't be that difficult at times to like figure out what your players are gonna do I mean you had a whole you know training session to be able to address all that and it just didn't work out so hopefully um that will get fixed and even worse is that during afcon we saw something new something that's been kind of brewing up for a good majority of 2023 but i think for the longest time i was not trying to think too much about it and that is egotism now i have mentioned it in my prior video that egotism seems to have been ultimately one of the downfalls of why we lost out in this afcon we had so many players that would rather be selfish try to be more of the star of the game instead of making smart plays that could lead into opening great better attacks like i remember there was countless time with the likes of likes Azadi Nunahi, I mean Haris, Sophie and Buffal, and Hakim Ziyech, who, you know, could have easily made a better play, but instead would decide to shoot it, and eight times out of ten, it would skyrocket up into the bleachers, and we're just like, what the heck? You saw a player make an overlapping run and didn't decide to go with that, and instead try to be the hero? we can't keep doing that because we need to play as a team not as individual players because if we keep with that same format it's gonna hurt us in the long run so addressing that now will ultimately help us grow better in the future so there you have it these are my final thoughts on the three things that i believe the moroccan national team should be focusing on from now until the next afcon these are things that are vital things that i believe 
Morocco needs to incorporate because if we don't then honestly we're never going to be able to progress further in the future and we'll always be stagnant in the same spot and being sure that Wally Regret or whoever is in charge is very much aware of that and helping us reach that next level that we need to be at. But of course, as mentioned, I would love to hear your thoughts and opinion. What do you think we need to do in order to make the national team better? What would you like to see be done starting today all the way until next AFCON. I'd love to hear your thoughts and opinions, but more importantly, I'm just glad that you all made it to the end of this video. And as always, don't forget to like and subscribe, and I will see you all in the next one. Take care, everybody.